We all hope we're never attacked, but if it happens, you really want to know how to defend yourself, what to do. Access Carolina's Ava Bratz is learning the art of self-defense. And part of this training, Ava, includes ways to just avoid dangerous situations. You're learning about things to look for if you're in the, the parking garage or even at the grocery store, right? Entirely true. I mean, we saw that jab, but what are some things to do to maybe even prevent getting in that sticky situation? We've got Ashley here. We touched a little bit on her very traumatic story in the beginning. So, I mean, when you saw him in your closet, what went through your head? You didn't freeze. You fought back. I did. I did. Um, I instinctively sat up and just, you know, I'd never had any self-defense background, mm. training, anything. I was just mama bear protecting her cubs. Yeah. And I literally fought my way. He sucker punched me. Um, I fought my way to the panic alarm to be able to activate it and then ran for help. Mm. And um, fortunately for me, I was able to fight. I didn't yeah. freeze. Like I said, I was just trying to protect myself and my sweet babies in their bedroom sleeping at 2.30 in the morning, this meth addict, you know in my bedroom closet. Who had been on the run for about two years and finally mm -hmm. caught. So justice was served and you've been able to help so many people. So before, I mean, obviously he haven't, he was in your house, but right. if you're out on the street, right, something happens, mm -hmm. we're expecting it. What are some of those things? What are those red flags I can look for? I think one of the things that we talk about is trust your gut. Mm -hmm. Gut instinct is everything. If it's a duck, it's a duck. Don't yeah. make it a rabbit, you know? Um, also, if you're coming up, up, you know, approaching someone and you just kind of get a weird feeling and you're coming up close to them, Walk around them. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why to put yourself in harm's way or safety for the risk of being rude or hurting somebody's feelings. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So you need to always be mindful of what you're doing and where you are. If you're parking downtown and you're going in to meet a friend for lunch and you exit and you go back to your car, don't sit there and check your text in the garage right. parking lot. Mm -hmm. Get in there, get in your car, and drive away. You can check your text later. Mm -hmm. Those are things that people just don't think about on a day-to-day -day basis. We get so caught up in our mundane routine of day-to-day, -day, and that's a huge thing right there. No doubt. And we were talking about social media a little bit. It is yeah. wild how many mm -hmm. apps have your location on them. Oh, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's scary, it actually. Is. Yeah, one of the things that I always promote when it comes to social media and keeping yourself safe is use those privacy settings. If there's information out there that you're putting about your family, mm -hmm. your children, your vacations, people are watching. So go ahead and make sure that your privacy setting is set. Make sure that you're aware of everything around you and what people that you actually interact with on social media. Mm -hmm. If somebody sends you a friend request and you don't know them, I won't accept it. Blah. If I haven't yeah. met you face to face, I would not accept your friend request. I started that several years ago. Mm -hmm. And I tell my children that. If you have children on social media, check their phones. Yeah. See what they're doing. See who they're interacting with. Who are they spending time with? Because the social media will tell you everything. Easily. Easily. And one thing I love that you turned trauma into confidence. What has your life been since that time? You said you're going on runs now. I mean, you're looking them in the eye. That is so palpable to a It's very empowering. You know, mm -hmm. before I would be kind of shrinking back or be scared to leave. If I was traveling for business, I wouldn't leave the hotel. Now, if I travel, the first thing I ask on desk is, you know, where's the route? Like, yeah. I'm out there. I'm sitting there. Good I'm running. You. I'm going. If I see somebody approaching me, I'm looking them square in the eye. Yeah. I'm able to give somebody a description should I need to. Those types of things. I mean, I'm not creeping them out, staring sure, them down. Sure, sure, yeah. But I'm making sure that they know that I see you. I love it. Yeah. If it looks like a duck, it's a duck. It's right? a duck. All right, Terrence, we got a duck here. We're going to show you guys one more move here. All right, so now this one is if, you know, they're in the down area, right? Okay, so you're talking about have the stance. Yes. Okay, this is a kick. This is a kick. All right, here we go. Okay, okay. amazing. Back. Good job. Okay. Back. Awesome. One more. Here we go. Boom. Good job. Up top. Sending that boy to prism, like you said, right? So actually, that kick, that wasn't a knee up and then extend. Yeah. What's different about the straight leg? So the thing about the straight leg is that you are actually making contact. You're not snapping at it. Uh -huh. You're kicking through it. Full force. So you have, you lose all fine motor skills in the sense of trauma. Mm -hmm. So when you're facing somebody with an A-frame, if you're kicking there, you're rubbing up and you're going to make contact. Whereas if you're doing this, you don't have the fine motor skills and concentration to hit that. But if you're rubbing up like that in an A-frame, it's going to make contact. Oh, it sure did. Yeah. Knuckles, yeah. baby. Yeah. Boom. That's it. All right, That's guys. It. More stuff when we come back on self-defense and feeling empowered. We're all taking notes and learning things, Ava. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, when